Looks like we've got two new Blood Angels kits revealed, plus some big questions answered for the Agents of the Imperium, an interesting system of split points costs, but unfortunately some pretty bad news for Death Watch, which do seem to be losing the majority of their mixed units to Legends. Let's talk about some Angels and Agents. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought I'd take a look at a couple of bits of fairly big news for Warhammer 40k today, two cool new Blood Angels kits, and a bunch of news and reveals for the Imperial Agents, which certainly won't go down amazingly well with a good chunk of Death Watch collectors. Let's start with the Sons of Sanguinius though, and basically Games Workshop have revealed two more kits for them. We saw their new Chaplains in Lamartes and Astarath previously. The Death Company do appear to have drawn the short straw, this time around they look like they're being represented by basically intercessors with an upgrade sprue, so kind of a shame not to see a bit more for them, and it seems that the internet is pretty certain that Sanguinary Guard and the Sanguinor are coming next. Today though seems to be the turn of the Red Blood Angels, two pretty cool new character miniatures for the army, starting out with this Sanguinary Priest. The Sanguinary Priesthood of the Blood Angels are the Blood Angels Apothecaries, as well as their regular duties for the chapter, they also have the task of keeping the Red Thirst in check, for the chapter Space Marines, making sure that wanton violence and bloodlust doesn't boil to the surface at inopportune moments and gets focused squarely on the enemies of man. We did have a plastic sanguinary priest on foot previously, and it looks like this is the update for him in Primaris form, essentially a variant on the Primaris Apothecary miniature, but with an extra little touch of Blood Angels flourishes and a bit of the macabre. We've got a blood chalice and some vials of red liquid, which I guess is one way to keep the space vampire's thirst in check. A grail chalice sort of icon on his right shin plate, plus the chapter icon on his left shoulder pad. And the miniature's got a fair few fun options. He's got three different head choices it looks like. The option to choose between the reductor pistol or this chainsaw in his left hand, with the other one being stowed on his waist. And we've got a little servo skill mounted drill, hovering to help him attend his medical duties. In general, looks like the reaction to this guy has been pretty well received. Taking the fairly nice, clean and uncluttered look of the Primaris, and giving just a few hints of Blood Angels and a bit more fancy ornamentation, feels like a fairly fitting update to me. In game at the moment, the Sanguinary Priests are really quite powerful models for amping up the melee prowess of the units that they lead. They give their squad extra AP, so often Assault Intercessors hitting at AP 2 rather than AP 1, and a 5 plus feel no pain to their unit, so genuinely quite a lot tankier and harder to take down as well. They have often been fairly commonly taken choices in competitive lists. Perhaps the only slight bit of bad news that we might be getting for this one is that if we're getting this one on foot, I'd be surprised if we get one equipped with a jump pack, and that could mean that that model goes the way of Legends, seeing as there isn't really something specific to represent that yet. I guess we won't know until we actually see the datasheet list of the codex, though I feel like that might be the case. It could be annoying for some people who like to fill them with Vanguard veterans or with jump intercessors. Here's a few more images of the model. You can see his head swaps here. There's an enclosed helmeted head with the apothecary symbol on it, and one with a head that maybe looks a little bit less gaunt and vampiric perhaps. The red thirst maybe not biting quite as deep for him yet. You can also see the reductor pistol and the chainsword stowed on his hip, and a few more shots of the side and back of the model. Here's the rumor engine as well of the little servo skull drill thing. I guess we can now see that that central mark in the middle of the skull is indeed the chapter marking. And on the bottom left is the miniature they still be replacing. Really quite a nice plastic miniature sculpt as it goes, I think. I feel like that one did the job really nicely. That one isn't all for the Blood Angels though, as there's also perhaps a slightly unexpected offering in a Blood Angels captain. And I feel like given the styling of the model, this guy might be sort of aimed to be the spiritual successor of the now retired Captain Tycho miniature. His armour plates are kind of similar to that, with a sort of stylized muscle sort of look, often seen on things like the Blood Angel Sanguinary Guard. Seems that they're keeping the nipples off show today though. And this guy does seem to have really quite a lot of options. Three different choices of head, including a Death Mask and a Laurel Wreath Primary Space Marine Helm. Three different choices of melee weapon, including Chainsword, Power Fist and Relic Blade. Two different choices of pistols, including an Inferno Pistol and a Heavy Bolt Pistol and you can choose to assemble them sort of firing like this, or held cocked. And there's also a fair few choices of the left shoulder pad as well, which has quite a big stylized wing on it, but you can swap that out for other options. As it goes, looks like really quite a fun and flexible kit, with really quite a lot of war gear represented. In game, I'd guess they'd treat this as the Black Templars, Marshall and Castellan. They're essentially space marine captains and lieutenants in basically all that they do, except with some slightly different variant war gear, 
I wouldn't be too surprised if this guy was treated similarly to that. I believe the current captain data sheet doesn't have the option to field him with an inferno pistol or with a chainsaw actually. So my guess will be that that's probably how they do this guy. He'll have his own data sheet in Codex Blood Angels with those war gear options. But we'll be keeping the same rules that the standard space marine captains get. Discounted command points and the big turn of fighting with extra attacks. Again, doesn't look like there's any option for a jump pack. Games Workshop tends to have jump pack characters really quite separate now with their own styling and miniature sculpt. But the on-foot captain again has been a really quite competitive model for the Blood Angels recently. Often running with assault intercessors, jumping out of impulses with a power fist and a bunch of intercessors to back him up, maybe granting him some re-rolls, they can really be a massive force to be reckoned with fighting over objectives. Otherwise here you can see the back of the miniature and a few other options for him. You can see his cape there, the options of the death mask and the laurel wreathed helm, plus the power fist and the relic weapon choices and the option to fill the pistol held aloft. I do feel like there's a fair few similarities with the Tycho miniature, particularly sort of the cresting wing on the left shoulder pad, plus the sort of stylized muscle type things, in particular say that left shin plate that they've got looks really quite similar. I presume Tycho's datasheet will probably be lost in the codex, given that he doesn't have a miniature on sale and has been dead in the law for quite a long time unfortunately. In any case, I feel like they've done pretty well with both of those sculpts as interesting Primaris choices to add to the Blood Angels range. I'll be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on it, and it does have me intrigued as to what comes next. Hopefully Games Workshop will deliver on their promise of a bit more gold. It'll be interesting to see what they do with Sanguinary Guard, and hopefully the Sanguinor as well, which it looked like Games Workshop had already teased in a rumour engine. I feel like the Sanguinary Guard are maybe the ones that Blood Angels players are most hyped for, so fingers crossed they managed to execute them well. Otherwise, moving on to the Imperial Agents news now. This is the one that's going to be going up for pre-order on Saturday, encompassing all the current Agents miniatures and also rolling in Death Watch with a few other fun options with new characters and transports added, plus the option to fill some Allied Sisters or Grey Knights. One of the biggest questions that people had was exactly what Death Watch units will be included in this book and which ones will be left out and go to Legends. I think most people were generally feeling that the writing was on the wall for the vast majority of the Primaris mixed kill teams, though Games Workshop used some kind of ambiguous language last time round, so at least a few people were still holding on to a fair bit of hope. Unfortunately though, basically in the last article, Games Workshop do seem to have confirmed that it is indeed having the mixed kill teams and even kill team Cassius go to Legends. The only Death Watch datasheets in the Imperial Agents Codex are the Death Watch Kill Team, which is basically the new name for their Veterans Kit, such as their flexible veterans in standard power armour, the Watchmaster to lead them into battle, Captain Artemis whose miniature is coming back alongside the launch, and their Corvus Black Star Flyer. Unfortunately that means legends for the rest of the Death Watch Index, so that's going to be all the mixed kill teams, the Proteus, Fortis, Spectrus and Indomitor ones, the Bikers and the Terminator units which seemed almost certain already to me really, and then Kill Team Cassius, this one with Chaplain Cassius leading his bunch of set loadout miniatures, the ones that originally came out in Death Watch Overkill, I believe. I strongly suspected that everything else would go to Legends, given that Games Workshop tends to have their policy of no miniature kit, no rules for it, and tend to stick to that as much as possible these days. Unless they actually came out with a box set for a mixed Primaris kill team, I thought we were unlikely to get rules for one, sadly. But who knows, maybe at some point in a Kill Team release or a future edition. Kill Team Cassius is a shame though, given that that kit is still on sale and in my opinion has some of the most interesting and cool Death Watch miniatures. I think it was just really quite a good idea having each one of the Marines drawn from a set chapter and then having a few of the trappings of that chapter and where they've come from all working together to purge some Xenos. It looks like all of these data sheets will be able to be fielded in Legends rules. So for casual games and things, you'll still be able to play with all the mixed kill teams and the other stuff. They'll get a final points cost, but basically from that point onward, their rules are essentially going to be mothballed. None of the units will get any balance updates if they turn out to be too weak for their points or too overpowered with some busted combo in some way. Games Workshop will just disregard them from any sort of balance and update sort of play and eventually will lose support gradually in future editions. Maybe not the absolute end of the world if you only play casually and people are very happy to play Legends rules around you, but still I wouldn't say that this is anything other than bad news, Games Workshop stepping back on supporting the core of an army that people have built up for a while now. In the article, as they've basically told us before, there's basically three different ways to field Death Watch now, and they did give us a few more details on what we'd known previously. 
If you want to field a full Death Watch army, you basically run Space Marines and add in essentially Death Watch allies using the assigned agents rules. Basically run your standard Space Marines as regular Space Marines, so I guess if you've got a whole bunch of Primaris kill teams, you'd have to reorganise them into more normal Space Marine squads. And then I guess you'd be able to run two sets of Death Watch veterans alongside, and two characters, maybe a Watchmaster and Captain Artemis perhaps if you're going for maximal theme. And then use one of the standard Codex Space Marine detachments, so perhaps Gladius Task Force, but you wouldn't be able to use the Black Spear or the Ordo Xenos one. One clarification that they gave is that it looks like the Corvus Black Star will be able to be fielded this way, at least from the language they've used in their article. I guess this means it'll probably gain the dedicated transport keyword, so you can have as many of them as you have Death Watch kill teams. At the moment we don't know whether or not those Death Watch kill teams will be able to use any of the rules that support the other Space Marines in the detachment, so things like the Gladius Task Force combat doctrines or other things from other detachments if you're using them, that's all depend on keywords. I feel like there's at least a reasonable chance that they won't be allowed to do that and just be treated as separate allies that stand apart. Technically it still means that you can field entire armies of black clad, essentially Death Watch Space Marines, though it's quite a bit more restrictive than before. I feel like you'd have far less theme and flavour when doing so. Otherwise, the second option to field them is Ordo Xenos, the detachment in the Codex Imperial Agents. It sounds like the Ordo detachments are basically going to help out certain themed units for those Ordos. The Death Watch are the Ordo Xenos's militant wing, so it makes sense that they'd get support there, but not so much elsewhere. My guess is they might make the Death Watch veteran kill team squad's battle line in this, which means that you could get 60 marines if so which I think for most people's purposes would be ample. I suspect that this one will actually wind up being really quite similar to the Black Spear Task Force type rules. The preview article said this is to keep the spirit of their mission tactics, so I guess that's multiple turns of damage buffs. I'd guess they'd still have some sort of representation for their special issue ammo and maybe teleport tricks. In this form, they'd gain access to all the other agents' units in large quantities if you want. So you could have a lot of henchmen warbands, or draw some support from the other Ordos, even if they wouldn't get quite as much supporting rules in this force. It does mean that compared with before though, unless you're playing Legends rules, you lose access to all the mixed kill teams, plus all the other Space Marine units out there, which would suck for a bunch of people collecting a wider army of them, and wanting to use themed detachment rules. Then finally, if you want, you can feel Death Watch as equal allies to anything else that's in the Imperium, so you could have an Imperial Guard force, and a Death Watch squad turns up to assist them with Xenos hunting. I feel like this one is a win, even if the other two, you kind of have to choose between themes detachment or full Space Marine army. I feel like often in the lore, you'd more get Death Watch operating as a single kill team, achieving a specific mission within a subsector, and might be joining armies to do that. This is kind of fun for anyone who just wants to build up a few miniatures and add them onto an army. Though it does remain to be seen if there'd actually be any sort of efficient choice or more of a fluff and flavour pick. I did think that being able to be fielded this way, but also being needed to carry the core of the strength of the Imperial Agents Codex might put Games Workshop in an awkward balance spot where they couldn't really do both, but it seems like they've confirmed some points changes that will allow that to be done a bit more easily. This system is apparently going to be basically splitting the Imperial Agents points cots in half once the Mutator and Field Manual comes out, which usually happens when the book actually physically hits shelves and gets posted out to people. You'll basically have one set of points for fielding the units within it as allied agents to other armies, and then a different set of points cost for fielding them as their own combined army. To me this does seem like a really smart decision and a good idea, as otherwise basically they'd be worrying about making any one agent's unit actually strong, just in case it means that literally every Imperial army feels that they now need to go and pick that up, as it's just basically also include for utility and support. There's lots of things that could be useful peripheral picks for plenty of armies, maybe things like Imperial Knights needing a bit of infantry that would have nowhere near the strength required to actually carry an army in their own right, so I think that this is a good decision as a result. It means that after all the rules are out, if the Imperial Agents Codex winds up being really underpowered, it means they could slash points costs, but only if you're fielding a full army of them, if they still are managing to break through as occasional allied picks, rather than being completely auto-included. I think this one's quite a good way to implement that and fix that problem, so good to see Games Workshop getting ahead of things before things come out. In any case though, let me know what you make of the news, what do you think of those new Blood Angel sculpts, would you be tempted to pick up a Sanguinary Priest or the new Captain sculpt? Let me know what you make of the units going to Legends from the Death Watch, Death Watch players out there, how bad will this be for your army, and what do you make of the new point system? 
The Imperial Agents Codex and Battle Forces will be going on pre-order on Saturday. If you are looking to pick up anything at all and get it at a discount, I do have a bunch of affiliate links down in the video description. Anything bought through those does go to help support the channel a little bit without costing you any more for using them. Here are the times when the Battle Forces and the Codex and the Combat Patrol should go live. Midnight Eastern Time in Fenris Workshop in Canada and Wargame Portal in the USA. 10am for Element Games in the UK and Midday Australian Eastern Time for Gap Games in Australia. A big thank you to folks using those when they do pick up something. It is very nice of you. Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments. I'll certainly keep up the regular news videos when we get any more details as to the rules of the Imperial Agents. Look forward to covering that in a bit more detail on the channel and reviewing the Codex in full once we get it. Finally, if you'd like to help support the channel and keep the videos coming, I would just like to mention that Auspets Tactics does have a Patreon page and you can find that linked in the video description down below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that's of interest, you can find it linked in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening though, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.